Hi everyone, welcome back to the Prof Side Again Youth channel. My name is Denise Rodriguez and today I'm going to be recapping Proverbs 24 to 31, which should have been the chapters that you should have been reading for the past couple of days for the Proverbs Challenge. Um, let's get started. So chapter 24. This chapter straight away talks about how we are not to be jealous of evil, sinful men, nor desire to be with them. Something that we need to keep ourselves away from is the influence of evil men because the more we observe the more we become that's something that my mom has always told me the more we observe the more we become so we need to be wise and truly understand what is good for us and what isn't God here is telling us to seek wisdom and understanding so verse 17 is telling us that even when our enemies fall like when they're going through a tough time in life or they're struggling with something we shouldn't rejoice or be happy because they're going through that even though they're our enemies that is wickedness and that's not how God wants us to be God wants us to be wise and kind and love our enemies so basically this chapter chapter 24 was talking about the difference between evil sinful men and honest wise men so chapter 25 this chapter is mainly giving advice to kings leaders pastors but a lot of it does also go to us I want to read verse 4 it says Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. The dross here is like tarnish, or just anything that doesn't belong in the silver and makes it unclean. So if you take the dross away from the silver, then the silver is ready to be shaped, moulded, become finer, and just something of greater value. So the dross is like sin. It makes us unclean, and when we get rid of that, we are ready for something great, something bigger and finer. And then it also makes that comparison here in verse 5. Take away the wicked from before the king and his throne shall be established in righteousness uh, verse 6 says put not forth thyself in the presence of the king and stand not in the place of great men so be humble um, don't raise or push yourself to a higher place a place that you are not meant to be like you know exalting yourself we must have humility I know a lot of people think that being humble makes you look weaker but it doesn't it just makes you a better person. And then I also want to point out verse 9 and 10. It says, Debate thy cause with thy neighbour himself, and discover not a secret to another, lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thy infamy turn not away. So here it tells us that if we have an issue with our neighbour, we should stop it within ourselves and not take it out and gossip about it or gossip about each other. Verse 21, it says, If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat, and if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. So here's just telling us to love our enemies. We must be different. If they're hungry, give them bread. If they're thirsty, give them water to drink. Be different, be humble, be kind. Don't hate back, love them. Jesus once said, love your enemies and pray for those that persecute you. So chapter 26. The first verse here begins a series of proverbs concerning a fool. So let's get down to verse 4 and 5. It says, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. And in verse 5 it says, Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. I think a lot of people get confused here because these two verses seem to contradict one another. But let's just take it slow and look into it. So in verse 4, the according to means in harmony with. So really it's saying, answer not a fool in harmony with his folly. On the commentary it says, to enter into discussion with a fool within terms of his folly is to lower oneself to his level and accept his outlook upon life as one worthy of consideration. And then here in verse five, the according to means as it deserves. So answer a fool so that the foolishness of a proposition is revealed to those who listen and to the fool himself. Then he may come to realize that he is far from wise and may seek to become so. And then it just continues to talk about a fool and his foolishness. And I think verse 11 is also a good one to point out. It says, as a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. So because he is a fool, he is bound to return to his foolish ways for as long as he remains one, because he doesn't know any better. And then verse 12 also talks about being humble. It says, a man that professes to be wise refuses to learn, but a man who recognizes his simplicity is willing to be taught understanding. So if you want to be wise, be humble. And then the rest of the chapter has some really, really good comparisons as well that are clear to understand. Chapter 27, verse one, it says, boast not thyself tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. So let's just make something really clear. Neither in this verse, nor the teachings of Jesus against anxious thought is intended to make us careless about the future it's not that 
Rather, this is a warning against an attitude of self-trust, self-assurance. The calm trust in God that marks a Christian enables us to face the future without fear. First four of this chapter, 27, it says, Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Now, ooh, okay, so anger and wrath are outrageous, but they're these sudden, like, outbursts that quickly pass away. However, jealousy, it just holds on to you for so long. It just holds on for so long and there's so much anger involved and it's just terrible. It just, it destroys you. It destroys you. And envy was the first sin to intrude its mysterious presence in a sinless universe. You know, with Lucifer wanted to be like God, jealousy, envy, and look what it has brought us to now. Look at this, it's terrible. And then verse five, it says, open rebuke is better than secret love. So this verse is talking about true love. Um, true love will act. If not, then it just fades away. If you truly love your friend or you truly love that person, you will want to give them advice. Be truthful, be honest and help them. And then verse 20, it says, hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. The more a man wants, no. <laughs> The more a man has, the more he wants. So this verse is talking about selfishness and people are never satisfied. And they can go down to deep and dark places, cause so much strife just to get what they want. Chapter 28, I wanna skip down to verse five. It says, evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. So those that reject God's law, can't see the difference between the right and the wrong. But those that submit to his guidance understand all things. In verse 9 it says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. There are many people, many people who are willing to serve God, but they wish to do it their own way. God cannot accept the service of those who have deliberately turned away from his law. To do so would sanction willful rebellion. That is, that is so true. So whoso keepeth the law is a wise man. Verse 13, uh, it says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. You, if you're covering your sin, you won't get anywhere. You won't prosper. You won't succeed, you know? But if you confess and you forsake them, you leave those sins behind and don't commit them again, you shall prosper. So, and then verse 19 to 28 here are talking about wealth and poverty. So verse 19, it says, He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread, but he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. This is basically saying that those that seek for the vain things in life, instead of working to earn a living, will be certain to fall into poverty, both material and spiritual. Then it carries on to speaking about transgression, robbery, a proud heart, etc. Chapter 29. I just want to point out this last verse of this chapter, which is verse 27. It says, an unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked. So basically, a good man finds it impossible to remain in a close personal relationship with the wicked, with the bad men, because their aims, preoccupations and standards are so different. Chapter 30. So verse 5, it says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. That is a very reassuring verse, so I wanted to read it out to you. And then verse 7 to 9, present two requests to God that the writer desired to see fulfilled during his lifetime. Number one, first request was remove far from me vanity and lies, worthlessness. And then number two, the second request is give me neither poverty nor riches, feed me with food convenient for me. So feed me with just enough. The reasons given in verse 9, which says, Lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or, Lest I be poor and steal, and take the name of my God in vain. So that is the reason why 
um, the writer is making this request, the second request to God. Chapter 31. This is the last chapter of Proverbs. Probably my favourite just because of the ending. We'll get there, we'll get there. So I want to point out verse 4 and yeah, verse 4 to the 7. It says, it is not for kings or limoire, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and forget and remember his misery no more. So indulging in intoxicating liquor can cause so much harm. So back in the days, the ancients had often only various mixtures of intoxicating drinks and preparations of narcotic herbs to dull the pains of fatal illness. And Jesus refused to drink the mixture because he desired to have a clear mind to resist the temptation of Satan and keep his strong faith in God. So obviously drinking alcohol, you get drunk, you, you won't be yourself. You're not yourself when you um, indulge in these intoxicating drinks. Verse 10 to verse 31 are oh, by far my favourite section, my favourite subject, virtuous woman. It says, who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. A virtuous woman, she is trustworthy, she is thoughtful, she is kind, she is wise. Verse 20, it says, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yet she reaches forth her hand to the needy. And then Verse 25, strength and honour are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up, and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favour is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. By is just un does this need explain? This is goals. And I pray that we all get there. We all reach the goal. Like it's the, it's just a beautiful thing that God wants us to be this way. I really enjoyed summarising this as well. This was such a beautiful ending to Proverbs. And I hope you enjoyed reading Proverbs as well. If you struggled to um, understand anything um, from any chapter or verse from Proverbs, I recommend you going to the Energy White commentary, Proverbs commentary. Um, it explains every single verse perfectly and you will understand it. This, that's what I used as well to help me understand some of the verses that I was struggling with. Um, so go back, read it again if I didn't cover a verse that you didn't quite understand. I hope this video was a blessing to you and if it was, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell so you're notified every time Prophesy Again Youth releases a new video. And yes, that was all. God be with you all. Till next time.